being said, we are here live for you on Facebook.com backslash Wake Up Call DT, YouTube.com backslash Wake Up Call DT, and shared on Facebook.com backslash Live Now DT, as well as shared on our winning fantasy football group on Facebook. Mike Sofka, my partner in fantasy football for years, and of course, he is the person that I trust to be my better half when it comes to fantasy football. So let's bring the man of the hour in, Mr. Sofka. How are we doing? I'm doing awesome. How are you, Dan? Doing very well. So we are in the room, Fantasy Football Mock Draft 2.0, set and ready to go. And so I'm going to click Start Draft, and we're going to start this thing and get this thing rocking and rolling as we get started here. So uh, you can see the picks are already in. Christian McCaffrey and Alvin Kamara went first here. And so I will uh, draft next on my list. And I'm going to go with Derek Henry. I know Delvin Cook's there, but I'm going to go with Derrick Henry, and Delvin Cook went right after me. So you're watching Mike and I in our 2021 Fantasy Football Mock Draft 2.0 inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly presented exclusively by the Wildcat Sports Pub. And I want to thank the Sleeper app for letting us do this here on YouTube.com backslash DT and on Facebook.com backslash DT as well as our other channels and, of course, the Wildcat Sports Pub. So, Mike, it's it's your pick, and, you know, we've had Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, and Delvin Cook off the board. Where are you going? Well, it, it, my pick here is going to be um, – it, it's I'm stuck in no man's land right here at number five, okay? The, the top four are pretty easy. I've seen them shuffled around in a little bit different order. Christian McCaffrey's always been number one. Delvin Cook more so, more, more number two followed by Alvin Kamara and Derrick Henry. And I, I basically have two guys tied at five and six here, and that's Zeke Elliott and Saquon Barkley. I'm not 100% on that knee of Barkley right now, so that'll be the difference. And everybody says, well, Zeke has had it down here last year. Well, that's when they were sticking eight guys in the box. So I, I still believe in Zeke. He had a bout with COVID last year. I think he's going to have a good year. And I think if you want to put eight guys in the box, go ahead, because Dallas has got premium receivers now that they can throw the ball to. So I don't think eight guys in the box is going to be as much. I have seen Zeke ranked as low as 18 and as high as three, but I'm comfortable here taking him at five. So let me pull him up here. There we go. Uh, there, I take him. Zeke Elliott. All right, so Mike going with Ezekiel Elliott as we're seeing a run of running backs come off the board here. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, Delvin Cook, and him taking Ezekiel Elliott, which is going to put us in a situation here momentarily as you'll see the rest of the board kind of firm out. And, and so it's already – come all the way back to Mike, so I'm going to go ahead and pause it here so you can take a look at what we have going on. Yeah, Christian McCaffrey going first, then Alvin Kamara. I took Derrick Henry, Delvin Cook. Mike took Ezekiel Elliott, the first wide receiver off the board, Tyreek Hill in our 2.0 mock draft here for the 2021 fantasy season, Nick Chubb, Jonathan Taylor, Saquon Barkley, and then Devontae Adams comes out here at the end of the first round. Interesting. Now that we know that Aaron Rodgers plans to play for the Packers, we're seeing Devontae Adams in the first round. And then that team in the snake draft went back and took uh, Stephon Diggs. Travis Kelsey, the tight end, already off the board. Aaron Jones, another guy. Two guys taken, end of the first round, early part of the second round from Green Bay, now with the news that Aaron Rodgers is coming back. Austin Eckler then off and Joe Mixon. And we're back to you, Mike. Thoughts on how the draft has gone? We're, we're going against the... The simulation of the of the computer as we're doing this mock draft. You and I are drafting against eight other teams. What are your thoughts on after you pick Zeke, Tyreek Hill being the first receiver off the board in our PPR league, then Devontae, Stephon Diggs, and that Travis Kelsey's already off the board, as well as maybe your thoughts on the Green Bay guys going early now that we have the news of Aaron Rodgers. Well, yeah, I, I, I like my rankings here, and I, I do like Devontae Adams regardless. I think... Uh... You know, he's, he, he's, he's just a baller. He's obviously, you know, probably the best wide receiver in the league, dare I say it. I mean, I know there's some conversation here with Tyree Kill and the guy that I'm going to be selecting here shortly. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much out of the, out of the first, uh, what was it, 15 picks. They're all in my top 17. 
So usually there's a couple guys. I try to I try to do something I've developed where I chop the draft in half. Yeah. And what that means is if it's a top, if it's a ten team draft. It's almost as if it was a five-team draft with the way I've ranked and the way I've taken people because of my rankings are a little bit unique than everybody else. I use projections, and I follow those projections up with what I call value base, and that's based against the median or the mean, the difference in points. And then I go a step further, and I break them down into tiers. And what that means is if there's four running backs in tier four, all those guys are the same. So you're looking at – sometimes it helps you to group the draft out. So that's – those are some of the little things that I've developed over the years, and that's what some of the people come back to me year after year for, and I'm happy to do that. Um, I definitely think the draft's gone as I thought. I thought Kelsey went at the right place right after the – the turn in round two uh it's a running back heavy league but it's you have to have a good running back and i don't see anybody that threatens the top 10 outside of maybe the tyree kill the Devonte adams the stefan Diggs. i think taking kelsey in the first round is stupid i haven't seen that but I, I i've heard people doing that i just think the draft has gone exactly the way we thought and at this point here at uh, two, the sixth pick in the second round on the way back to me from the fifth pick, I have to go with DeAndre Hopkins. I think he's, you know, capable of putting up top five numbers overall in the league. So I've, I've got him as high as five elsewhere, and I've seen him as low as 19. But I'm totally comfortable taking him here at the uh, 16th overall pick at 2-6, DeAndre Hopkins. Let me select that for us. You know, and, and with you taking DeAndre Hopkins, that was exactly the move that I was going to take. So, you know, smart minds think alike. And, you know, I, I definitely was uh, was going there. That was that was my next move. And so you take DeAndre Hopkins. Pat Mahomes, uh, wondering when the first quarterback's going to be taken off the list. Uh, right before me, I would not take a quarterback in the second round. That's, that's not where I was really looking to do it. So I'm going to go to receivers now and see what we have going on. There's a couple guys that I'm looking at, and I'm going to end up going DK Metcalf's way because if I didn't get DeAndre Hopkins, he was my move. So I will go with DK Metcalf, and uh, A.J. Brown goes after that. George Kittle, another tight end taken in the second round here. Justin Jefferson and Calvin Ridley, and uh, Ridley was my next pick. And Ridley was actually going to be that I thought he would come back to me there's only a few picks in between I thought maybe I would be able to get him here Uh, normally I wouldn't do this I'm looking at a couple different things here but knowing that I think some quarterbacks are going to go off the board here early uh, there's there's two ways that I could go and two two ways that I can look at this thing I want to lock him up and so it is the third round so I am going to do this There's a few different places I wanted to go, but I think he's the second best fantasy quarterback, and I don't think he's going to come back to me. So I'm going to take Josh Allen out of Buffalo with my third round, giving me Derrick Henry, DK Metcalf, and Josh Allen. I'm going to pause the draft here now before Mike's next pick in round number three. Mike, your thoughts. Uh, We see that you pick DeAndre, and then Pat Mahomes comes off the board. I go with DK Metcalf. A.J. Brown, Justin Jefferson, Calvin Ridley, all chosen as receivers in a couple picks. George Kittle's the second tight end off the board. And then I went with Josh Allen, and I swear to you that the computer simulation reads my mind because I was going to pick Calvin Ridley, and they picked it one pick before me. Then I was going to look at picking Najee Najee Harris if I didn't pick Josh Allen, and it was one pick after me. What are your thoughts on the draft so far after your pick of DeAndre Hopkins? Well, a couple surprises here. A few things right off the bat. The Patrick Mahomes pick took me back for a second there, but I get it. And this guy wanted Patrick Mahomes, and, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, sometimes you got to reach if you really firmly believe and things are close enough, that's fine. But to me, it's all math. It's always been math. you got to leave your emotions at the door. I don't care if you went to – if this guy went to the same college you did. I don't care if you've been a – uh, an NFL team fan for all these years, so that's going to be the deciding factor. You're looking for disappointment this year. You're looking for hating your own team, so don't do that. You know, leave your emotions at the door. It's one of the most difficult things to do. I use that to my advantage. Trade. 
I'll tell you some secrets about that sometime. I know if you're in a league against me, chances are I already know who you are, okay? And it's, it, it, some people call it dirty, but I already know who your favorite college team is. I know who your favorite pro team is. So those are going to help me in making decisions. If you're if, 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 I, if you're going to go past me and come back to me on the turn again. So in other words, I already know who you're going to pick more times than not. So you did surprise me with the Josh Allen pick there, though. Uh, you know, I haven't seen him that high. But then again, you know, you can't, you can't go wrong, you know, because if, if you look at it the other way, you got two, four, six, seven. You, you know, you've got another 15 picks before – you get to pick again. So Josh Allen might be gone at that point. So sometimes you just got to go with your gut if that's what it's telling you. The Najee Harris pick, I like that. I think he's going to be productive. I think they're going to use him more so than Ben if they can. My only concern with Najee Harris is he might get the living daylights beat out of him this year because I'm worried about their offensive line pass or run blocking. I'm worried about the offensive line in Pittsburgh for Najee Harris and for his career. Hopefully, Hopefully everything will go well for that young man. He seems like a, a likable person. At this point, I'm going to have to go with a guy I'm, I'm considering to be like a Swiss Army knife. This is a guy who played more receiver in college than running back. And I got to go with Antonio Gibson. I mean, how can I not do that? He's sitting right there. I got him as the 20th ranked player. So, again, I'm a little bit ahead of the curve here now. If I've got the 20th ranked player at, at, at 25, I'm already getting, you, you see what I'm doing? I'm getting guys that I had ranked in the top 20, but I'm getting value here, and that's what I try to do. So I'm happy with taking Antonio Gibson here. Yeah, you know, and Antonio Gibson, another guy to look at, another guy that was on my thing. And like you said, uh, you know, a little bit of a surprise that I took Josh Allen there, but looking at the draft and looking at the way that it was going and how early Pat Mahomes was taken – I have to assess that, and if I have a plan of saying, okay, I'm going to take a receiver here, I'm going to take a running back, in my mind, at that point, seeing where things were at, there was that situation where I'm not going to get Josh Allen back. And so I didn't want to put myself in that situation where I wasn't going to be able to get him on the back end coming back here in round number four. And so that's where you have to kind of adjust and say to yourself, okay, do I want to lock this up now? Where do I want to go? Because Najee Harris was on my list, because Antonio Gibson was on my list. Uh, after that, so Clyde edwards alaire came off, uh, Keenan Allen, Darren Waller. Tight ends taken very early here in our draft, very different from our mock draft 1.0, uh, them being taken three of them in the first three rounds. J.K. Dobbins, DeAndre Swift, Josh Jacobs has fallen down the list to the fourth round, beginning of the fourth round. Terry McLaurin with Ryan Fitzpatrick as his quarterback. Michael Thomas falls to the fourth round, uh, which is kind of where he was last time. Julio Jones, now at Tennessee, has fallen to the fourth round. He used to be one of the top two guys. And Miles Sanders was taken. A lot of running backs, a lot of green here. It's color-coded, folks. So uh, green is our running backs. Blue are our receivers. Red, red pinkish, you know, reddish is, uh, is our quarterbacks. Orange are the tight ends. And that's what you're seeing so far on the list, Mike. Uh, your assessment of the fact this has been very running back heavy, and as opposed to our other draft, I think our wide receivers are more spread out in this one. Yeah, wide receivers are starting to come back here to start to catch up. Three tight ends off the board in the first three rounds, two in the second, one in the third. That doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, the fact that people are gobbling up the running backs, you know, it is what it is. The NFL will tell you that uh, or it'll show you with their actions, I should say, that running back's a disposable player. And the NFL's not for long, and on the average, you're absolutely correct. The challenge is everybody thinks they got Emmitt Smith. Everybody thinks they have O.J. Simpson. Everybody thinks they have this guy who, when we look back 20 years, we're going to say, oh, my, that guy was the stud. That, that was the guy in the class as he's getting inducted into the hall. That's not reality. That doesn't happen. Yeah, I mean, you look at Saquon and, and Miles Sanders. These guys have had near catastrophic knee injuries very early in their career. So you got to you got to look at more than one thing. But you definitely have to have some running backs. I've been in a position over the past several years that I've been fortunate enough to scout rookie running backs very effectively. Anybody can tell you that Najee Harris is going to get a ton of carries. He is going to happen. 
I'm looking at the other guys that are value guys that are in good situations. I'm not going there right now, though. I'm going back to receiver. If you look at the key here on the bottom of our draft board, it shows that, uh, you know, we get one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, two flex, a kicker, and a defense. So some running, some leagues have three wide receivers, but I've got one wide receiver at this point. So I'm not necessarily looking to go position specific. I'm sticking to my plan here. I'm going with the guy who's ranked 25. So I'm on the 35th pick, and I'm getting a guy that I've got ranked 25 which is exactly where you want to be. Again, I'm trying to cut the draft in half. I'm trying to make sure that I got the better players out of everybody. I want to make it seem that when I left this draft, it might as well have been a five-team draft because my team sat good. You can win or lose your league in the draft. So this, these are important to do your homework, get your act together ahead of time, and stick to the plan. Something's going to happen. Something's going to steer you in a different plan. That's okay. Don't be rigid. Be flexible. But at this point, I got to go with a guy that I like a lot. I think he's going to have a ton of catches this year, and that's Allen Robinson. I don't think the quarterback situation is going to determine whether he's successful or not this year. He's going to be successful. He's the guy in Chicago. I got to go with Allen Robinson. All right, so Mike going Allen Robinson, who you can see in our in our ranker here that uh, was provided for us is 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 higher uh, the highest one on the list and chris carson goes there which leaves me to get my pick which is what i wanted mike evans because he has tom brady and so mike evans coming off the board here and giving us an opportunity to bring him in so you'll see it as you look at the board uh, how it's changed so mike goes Allen robinson i was going to go mike evans the whole time so i got mike evans chris carson goes in the middle Kyler Murray and Lamar Jackson, two more quarterbacks taken off the board back-to-back. Four quarterbacks are off. David Montgomery goes in round number five at the beginning. And Amari Cooper after that, which leads us to my pick. And my pick, I have a couple different thoughts of kind of where I want to go here. There's a few different places that I can go. I'm going to go to a guy. This is round number five, so I'm okay making this pick. I'm going to go with Kyle Pitts. And, and I was waiting to see if he would come back around. He is a tight end. I think he's going to be more of a wide receiver type of tight end for the uh, Atlanta Falcons. Calvin Ridley's there, but Calvin Ridley was helped by Julio Jones. Kyle Pitts is going to have to step up. In my mind, kind of in my back pocket, I said in round five, if he's still there after I get one of my other receivers, technically he's my third receiver even though he's a tight end. So I'm okay with picking him up because of, the workload that I anticipate he may have. Mike, your thoughts as we go through this and see a couple more quarterbacks off, my Kyle Pitts pick, and Daryl Henderson going right after that. Yeah, you know, I definitely like the Kyle Pitts pick. I don't think you were premature in that. I think he is going to get the usage. If you can if you can remember back to like when the Colts had Dallas Clark, where he basically lined up in the slot. You know, you knew when Dallas Clark was on the field, they were going to look to get him the ball. So I look for that out of Kyle Pitts as well now, especially now that the movement's been made in Atlanta. Uh, I, I I think the uh, Amari Cooper pick was great there. I like David Montgomery and the Josh Jacobs pick, of course. But I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, geez, conventional wisdom would say, that I should probably take a tight end because the good ones are almost gone. The good ones are all gone. You know, at this point, if you don't get Kittle, Kelsey, or Waller, and then maybe a Pitts, depends on if you have a Florida Gator fan in the draft or an Atlanta Falcon fan in the draft, they're more apt to, to take a chance on him before most people. But I, you know, I don't think you lose value there. So when I look at this, I'm not going to panic. I'm not going to take a tight end here because that's not what my rankings say to do. I still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have about nine receivers here that I can choose from. My running backs are tapped out at this point, but that's okay because if you look at my team, I have two premier running backs. I need to start two. Now, I know you sometimes you want a running back in the flex. That's okay. The flex will work itself out. I also have two of the better receivers, I feel. So I'm feeling good here. So this is almost like a wild card pick. I can pick anywhere I want. I can pick anyone I want. And I think this guy's going to have a tremendous year. I think he's going to have a great 
tail. He's going to pick right up where he left off. And I got to go with C.D. Lamb. I think Dallas is going to be able to win the ball around. I think Dallas is going to surprise some people this year. And I'm totally happy with taking the 32nd ranked player on my rankings here. And that is at 40, 45. So, again, I've almost cut the draft in half with my projections, and I'm totally happy with C.D. Lamb here. Yeah, so C.D. Lamb going in round number five. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Looking at Mike's team, uh, Ezekiel Elliott, Antonio Gibson, at, at the two running backs that he has, and at wide receiver C.D. Lamb, Allen Robinson, and DeAndre Hopkins. See how quick the draft goes right back to Mike uh, after taking C.D. Lamb, who I think is going to have – a nice workload here with Amari Cooper. And C.D. Lamb, I think, eventually is going to become the one in Dallas. So uh, Jamar Chase being reunited from LSU to Cincinnati with the with their uh, quarterback that they have you know, on the team and, and, and just what we've been able to uh, see with Joe Burrow. A lot of good things that he showed me as my backup quarterback last season before he got hurt. Now he has Jamar Chase. Uh, Travis Etienne, I was hoping, would come back to me. He did not. He's... Ranked a little bit higher as time is going on here. And uh, fifth round, not a bad not a bad choice here. The team that got him already has Eckler and Chubb. And then Russell Wilson is the next quarterback off the board. Cooper Cup and Chris Godwin go. DJ Moore goes with his new quarterback, Sam Darnold. Robert Woods goes to the same team that took Cooper Cup. Could be a Rams fan that we have here. And then Adam Thielen goes. Uh, Kareem Hunt going to the team that has Nick Chubb. So they got the handcuff. And then Justin Herbert who people are believing in in, in in mock drafts and in our last one, and I think in this one, as he is the sixth quarterback taken off the list. Mike, what are your thoughts? Yeah, again, things are going as I, I expected them to. If you look at the board, there's also two, four, six quarterbacks gone and four tight ends. I just have running backs and wide receivers. There's two other teams that mirror mine right now and nothing but – running backs and wide receivers. So that's important to look at trends. You want to be the trend starter. You want to be the guy that, oh, crap, he picked a tight end. I better take a tight end, and everybody starts taking tight ends. You want to be on the front half. You want to create those runs in your draft. You don't want to, at the same time, you don't want to fall victim to a run. You don't want to take yourself away from your projections, away from your game plan, just to fill is doing it everybody's buying toilet paper i need to quick i need to run out and get toilet paper don't do that if you're gonna do that be the guy that starts those trends be the lady that is not afraid to step out and make something happen and if everybody's taking tight ends that's okay i'll take this guy over here because he's the highest ranked player on my list trust your system a lot of people they make a mistake they study they look at all this stuff they get everything ready and then the first thing they do is they bail on the plan the first type of first hint of adversity in the draft don't do that it's like real life it's not going to go perfect it's not going to be 100 percent the way you think it is no matter how hard you study no matter what you do so just be flexible but stick for the most part keep going forward don't take all these right and left turns. Don't do that. It's going to throw yourself off. Now, at this point, I'm real tempted to take another wide receiver here. But I'm probably not going to do that. If you look, there hasn't been a tight end taken in a little while. Yeah. We're halfway through the sixth round, and there's a tight end that's one, two, three, my fourth best available player at this point in the draft. I have him ranked at 53, and right now I'm getting him at, what, 56. So I'm okay with that, and I'm going to go with T.J. Hawkinson. I think T.J. is going to have an outstanding year. I think Jared Goff looks to the tight end. He's going to have to in that situation. They don't have too many other great players there in Detroit, so I, I like T.J. Hawkinson. All right, and so Mike going with T.J. Hawkinson here, and Mark Andrews goes right after. Uh, Mark Andrews, one of those guys that's dipped down the list. Uh, last year, Mike and I argued him in the top three, and then he had not the greatest performance, so he's fallen down here. And so he is the sixth tight end that is chosen and a back-to-back -back with Mike's here. If you look at my team, I have Derrick Henry as my only running back, so that is my most logical spot to go to. I have my quarterback. I have my two receivers and Kyle Pitts technically as a third receiver. So I got a couple different places that I can go. 
in the grand scheme of things. And James Robinson is a guy that I like. Uh, Travis Etienne is where I was going to go. But the guy that I think is going to get a lot of workload, albeit the fact that he is a rookie, is the man that I'm going to pick here at this point, and that's Javante Williams. I have a feeling that as much as I'm getting him in round number six, he's still somewhat of a sleeper to me because he's a rookie. But, you know, seeing him at North Carolina, seeing what he was able to do at North Carolina against Syracuse especially, uh, Javante Williams, one of those power backs that I believe will eventually uh, take the reins from Melvin Gordon, who I don't think is going to get the majority of the carries anyways. So I like him here. Uh, Miles Gaskin getting taken after that. Mike and I talked about how he was uh, Mr. Irrelevant a few years ago, but we didn't think he was. And we thought that he would get the starting job as a seventh round pick, and he did. Tyler Lockett going after this, and after I took DK Metcalf a lot earlier, I thought somebody would think of him sooner. And then Kenny Galladay going, and then Devontae Smith, the rookie, going from Philadelphia, which puts me in a situation to look at wide receivers as well as to look at, uh, you know, to look at the wide receiver things and running back. Well, I think wide receivers, there's enough good out there that I can go and get somebody that I want to get later on in the draft. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that James Robinson pick now, and I'm going to put him onto my team. And uh, not getting Travis Etienne, this is a guy that was a undrafted 1,000-plus yard back, almost set the record for Jacksonville if they would have let him play the last couple there. James Robinson, I don't think, will be a forgotten man. Urban Meyer's got two capable running backs, and I would venture to say he'll be using them and uh, see James maybe go power inside and then have Travis be the guy that's going to block and maybe be the check down in certain sets, which gives me Derrick Henry, Javante Williams, and James Robinson at running back. Josh Allen, my quarterback, DK and Mike as my receivers, and Kyle Pitts as another receiver, but there as a tight end. Deontay Johnson uh, goes to goes to the next team here after me at our in our uh, seventh round here as we're sitting. So in round number seven, four picks in, Deontay Johnson going, not a bad play there, Mike. It's up to you. What do you got now? Well, you know, I'm looking at the flow of the draft board, and like I said last round, just before I took TJ Hawkinson, there were two people behind me on the way back that needed tight ends, and three people coming back in this round that are behind me that need tight ends. So it was, you know, I stepped up a little bit to get Hawkinson above Andrews. I was okay with Andrews if he fell to me and if I decided to go that route on the way back. Yeah. Looking at the board using the same thought process, I'm looking at the quarterback situation right now. And again, I don't let the draft dictate to me who I pick. I'm in control of the draft. Don't let the draft control you. But I'm okay with a couple different options here. I, I like the I, I like the Javante Williams pick. I think him and Gordon are going to split a lot of time, and I think that's okay for him as a rookie, and that's great for Gordon as a veteran. So I think it's an outstanding one-two punch. The problem is they could be cannibalizing each other a little bit, but I definitely like Williams in the in the Rocky Mountain area there. Miles Gaskin again. You you, you spoke of how we feel about him. I think he's going to have the opportunity to. I think he's a little on a slight size in my mind's eye, but he did some great things when he was at Washington. I look forward to him now that he's got some time under his belt in the NFL. I think, you know, you can't go wrong there as well. Tyler Lockett, I think that was a tremendous value pick. You know, you look at that, that's pick number 60. I had him ranked at 39. So I, it's an outstanding pick there. Then Kenny Galladay, I thought that was right on the money. I had him at 55. Devonta Smith, you know, making the appearance there, one of the first big rookie receivers we've seen come off the board. I think that makes some sense there. You know, he, he could have a big year, but I think – that he's not going to have as big a year as everybody thinks. I had him ranked number 95. So he goes at, at uh, what, what is it, 72 there. So, again, a big difference there. And that's okay. Let that stuff happen. Don't let that affect you. Don't, let, don't, don't get over emotional here. Don't go, hey, all right, that guy picked the guy that I had way down there. It's okay. You know, you don't get don't get too high, don't get too low in your draft. James Robinson, I like that pick. I think he's gonna continue to get volume. However, Travis Etienne is gonna be on the field sometimes with him. Travis Etienne's gonna be in the slot. Travis Etienne's gonna move all over that field. And that's okay, because that could open some things up for James Robinson. And at this point in the draft at your third receive at your third running back, I think that's a pretty good pick. Deontay Johnson again, I think he could have the best year out of all the receivers. Even though Chase Claypool's an outstanding young talent, 
And even though Juju Smith-Schuster is still there, I think Deontay Johnson could outshine them all. I'm not 100% sold that that was the, the pick there, though. It could have gone in other directions. It could have – you know, but Deontay Johnson's okay there. Uh, I, I would be okay with that pick. I'm looking at my projections. I'm looking at my board. I got a wide receiver and T. Higgins here at 47. And then at 54, I got a Mike Davis from Atlanta. Then I go Brandon Ayuk and Claypool. So I'm looking one, two, three, four. The fifth guy on my on my board right now is Dak Prescott, the quarterback. And if you look at the board on the front side of the draft, everybody's already got a quarterback. So that's okay. If this draft, if it was going the other way, I, I might pass on a quarterback here because everybody in that direction already has them, and I get more value somewhere else. I look at where I'm at now. Three teams behind me need a quarterback. So there's going to be some quarterbacks taken after I pick, regardless of who I pick. I've got Dak ranked at 59. I've seen him as high as 36. I've seen him as low as 93. I believe in Dak. I think he's going to have a pretty good year this year, even though every every year they seem to get down on this cap. But I think he, he just proves him wrong, and, and, and I'm okay with that. So I definitely like Dak Prescott here. So Mike going with Dak Prescott, great value here in round number seven to pick up Dak Prescott at this point. A lot of good quarterbacks are still out there, and some of them are raise, you know, going up the board here. A lot of expectation and hope for Trevor Lawrence and some of the other guys, uh, Joe Burrow as well, who was just taken in round number eight. And so, you know, and, and like Mike said, don't let the draft, you dictate the draft, don't let the draft dictate you. Be the trendsetter not the uh, trend responder. And so as we look at this right now, a uh, deck coming off the list, a uh, Brandon Ayuk going after that, DJ Shark, who is on my list, and Juju Smith-Schuster, two guys that I thought were falling and I thought would fall back to me here as they kind of were forgotten people out there in round number seven. Uh, Melvin Gordon going after my Javante Williams pick in the next round. Uh, T. Higgins, Chris Claypool, uh, Joe Burrow being taken as the next quarterback after Mike. Uh, Leonard Fournette, Noah Fant is now off the list, and Odell Beckham Jr., which puts us back with you, Mike. A run on receivers. We are seeing a focus on running backs to a certain extent, but a lot on receivers right now. And a lot of the guys that were here in the rankings that were relatively higher, uh, those 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 are guys that we're now seeing off the list. The Jujus, the DJ Charks, the Brandon Ayooks, the T. Higgins. What's your take as we head into the back half of round number eight? Yeah, I'm feeling really good about where I'm at. A lot of receivers went after me in the past couple rounds here. So I, I looking at the board, I do have my quarterback. I do have my tight end. I feel good about where they're I do have a couple running backs that I feel good where they're ranked. I do have the wide receivers. I, this is almost like... I'm the bonus buy. I'm the kid at the candy store, and mom's giving me X amount of money, and I go in there, and I get all my favorite candy, and I still have money left over. So I'm, this is, I feel like I'm, I'm playing with house money here. I still need another flex, but that's okay, because whoever I pick is going to fit that flex. This is where I can take a step out. This is where I can start taking some chances if I want to, within reason. Okay, I'm not going to get all crazy, but at the same time, how can I not take a running back here if he appears on my board? There's a couple guys I'm looking at at this point, and I'm going to go with the highest ranked one here. I have him as high as 36, as low as 102. I'm going to go with Mike Davis here out of the ATL. I think halfway through the eighth round, that's some value, especially when I have him ranked at 54. So I'm going to go with Mike Davis here. Yeah, Mike Davis, the guy that was backing up Christian McCaffrey when Christian went out with a torn ACL and did a did a pretty good job there in Carolina for him and uh, gave gave him a starting job in Atlanta. Cortland Sutton, again, the computer reading my mind and putting me in a situation. Uh, Cortland Sutton was one of those guys that's you know fallen down to round number eight. He was injured last year as well. We really didn't get to see him. I call him hands and uh, covered him at SMU. A lot of talent that he has. So if you look at my team, my team's here in the corner. A couple running backs are are on the three running backs on the team right now. A couple receivers. I can stand to go receiver at this point. And so looking at the receivers that are available to me, uh, you know, the Jalen Waddles that are out there in Miami, 
is kind of a question mark. Debo Samuel, kind of a question mark. There's some of these guys that, that I'm not really sold on. I was going to go Cortland Sutton, and I told myself, if not Cortland Sutton, then Jerry Judy. And so I'm going to back-to-back the Denver wide receivers, and I'm going to go with Jerry Judy and me and my pick and take him here. And then as soon as my pick happens, we see a run on running backs. Chase Edmonds, Ronald Jones, Raheem Mostert, and Kenyon Drake all go four running backs in a row as we are continuing on into round number nine. So, you know, looking at some of the things that are here, a quarterback, there's there's a ton of quarterbacks out there. There's a lot of capable guys out there. So I want to get yourself, you know, kind of hung up in all of that. Wide receiver-wise, now with uh, three receivers on the team and Kyle Pitts as a piece of that. Uh, for me, at this point in the draft in round number nine, I'm going to go back to wide receiver, even though I just took one. This is something that, that I would like to do and like to go back to. So that's kind of where I'm set up and where I'm thinking at this point is to go back to wide receiver and to look at some of the people on this list. You know, uh, Jalen Waddell is at the top of the list that's here in the ranker, but there's a lot of different talent around the league and different guys that are in different places now. Will Fuller is going to be in Miami with him as well. Uh, some guys I want to reach to, but I don't want to reach to just yet. And there's certain guys that, that are unproven because of the situations that they're in. So at, at this point, uh, not knowing kind of where certain guys are going to end up, there's two picks that I would like to make. And uh, one of those picks is going to put me in a situation that could be a little bit dicey, so I'm going to go in the other one. Uh, LaVisca Chanel. I was going to go DJ Chark in round number nine. I don't think I can go wrong with LaVisca Chanel as Chark was taken a couple rounds earlier. This is a young wide receiver, a rookie last year. Trevor Lawrence is his quarterback. I feel good about this pick. The other pick that I was looking at is still on the board, so I'm not going to mention it, but I'm going to pause it here so Mike can make his move. But, Mike, your thoughts as uh, after I drafted Jerry Judy, we saw four running backs go, and then I went with LaVisca Chanel, and another running back went. So uh, besides my two wide receivers picked, five running backs are now off the board, including James Conner, who is now in Arizona. Well, if you look at the, the planning I had going forth here, right after I picked Mike Davis, five out of the next eight picks are running backs. So what did I do? I had started a run there in some sorts, okay? I'm not overexcited. I'm not I'm not celebrating yet. I'm not spiking the ball in the end zone. I haven't won the draft yet, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about where I'm at. Now, at this point, Chenault wasn't a bad pick. I had Chenault at 81, but I've got – four receivers that are ranked remarkably higher than him right now. So again, I feel like I'm playing with house money here. I'm going back to receiver because I've got the guys I've got ranked next. I've got, uh, let me give you, Will Fuller at 79, at 70, Brandon Cooks. I'm not feeling too good about that now. He's been slipping down my board. I got Tyler Boyd at 69. Then at 67, I have Robbie Anderson. I think he's going to do a lot. I, I'm really a Robbie Anderson fan. I like his work ethic. I like when he speaks. I like what he has to say. And I, I definitely like his performance on the field. I've seen him as high as 41. I've seen him as low as 90. I have him at 67. So I'm going to go with Robbie Anderson here. And Robbie Anderson was one of the guys on my list uh, reuniting with his former quarterback, Sam Darnold. I think when him and Quincy Anunua were let go from the Jets, that's something that affected Sam Darnold, and now Sam gets to reunite with him in Carolina with the head coach, Matt Rule, that I spent a lot of time with when he was at Temple. So I like the Robbie Anderson pick. That was one of my three receivers I was looking at at that point. Uh, Jalen Waddle goes off the board after that. Aaron Rodgers taken in round number nine, and now that we know he's going to be playing. And so this is in an 18 18- 18 round draft right at the middle of the draft literally at the midway point we're seeing Aaron Rodgers go in our draft and I'll pause it here so we can take a look at some of this Debo Samuel who I'm not really sold on Uh, Michael Carter who played with Javante Williams at Carolina he was a guy I was looking at taking uh, two Tar Heels two rookies uh, looking at taking him if he dropped a little bit lower at which he didn't go that far uh, below kind of what I was looking at here but in round number nine he goes uh, Dallas Godard after that. Trevor Lawrence gets taken in round number 10. I was looking at him as a backup quarterback, but I didn't want to take him too high. Uh, Brandon Cooks was the receiver I was looking at with LaVisca Chenault. And then David Johnson going after that. Tyler Boyd. 
and Mike Gusecki coming off the board as we've seen a sporadic smattering of orange, which are our tight ends. Mike, your thoughts on how the draft is going now uh, with Robbie Anderson and Debo Samuel, Brandon Cooks. We're seeing less wide receivers being taken, and now we're seeing a, essentially a bunch of different colors at this point. People are now trying to lock up the things that maybe they aren't as comfortable with. And we saw, you know, uh, Team 6 here take their first tight end in round number 10. Uh, team 10 take their first tight end in round number 9. And so, you know, they're, they're kind of assessing where to go at this point. And, uh, you know, obviously taking their quarterbacks, Team 10 taking Trevor Lawrence as their only quarterback, and Aaron Rodgers going in, in round number 9, like I had stated before. Yeah, I think things have gone just the way we thought. I think Jalen Waddle is moving up on my board. I have him ranked 109, but I'm okay where he got picked right there. Sometimes you got to take a chance, and, you know, maybe that guy feels good about him. I, I, I definitely have him on the up, and maybe in a month from now, maybe he'll be moving up the draft board even more. I think Aaron Rodgers, now that we've got the information that he's back in the building and they're chuck the ball around with Aaron Rodgers. I think everything's going to be just fine with Aaron Rodgers this year. I think Trevor Lawrence was a bit of a stretch there. I had him at 125, but hey, that's okay. I got a good feeling about him too. He's moving up, but he's still a rookie. Just remember that. They're going to bring the pressure on him, and is the offensive line going to be able to protect him? I think they're going to put him in good packages where he has the protection you give him the flexibility to step outside and make a play like he can you know this is where you're in a, a bit of a quasi area there i like the tyler boyd pick i think there's a lot of value there at uh was that 104 that you know i have him at 69 so I, again that's a tremendous pick there and here i'm just i got the next seven picks there's nine picks left i got the next seven picks to play with i can go wherever i want Again, I, I'm always taking the best available player. But if it comes down to it and it's a position need and I got two guys in the same tier, these two guys are about equal. They just play different positions. I'm going to go with the need there. I'll, I'll step up or down to take the need. But all my needs are kind of met here. I'm not worried about a backup quarterback, a backup tight end in a 10-team league. You know why? Because I got two guys that are great, and I'm going to have a half a season to worry about the bye weeks. Worry about that later. Now, if one falls to your lap at a tremendous value versus your rankings, of course you're going to take the QB there. I don't know if I can do that, though. I don't know if I want those decisions to make each week. It's a good it's a good problem to have when you don't know which quarterback on your team to start. But are you giving up value somewhere else to get a guy who's probably not going to start that often in your league? Now, with that being said, 33% of the quarterbacks every year do go down to injury or something happens where they can't make all their starts. So you do have to have that in the back of your mind. I'm looking for a stopgap guy at that point. I have Tom Brady ranked relatively high right here. I've got him ranked 82. I think Tom Brady, with one full year in that system, I think he really started to turn it around. After the Bucks went 7-5 and five last year, things started to click. Well, don't forget, that was a COVID year. They didn't have a lot of time to play. They didn't have a lot of time to install stuff. Now, as you see, all the playmakers are back, and the Bucks look deadly. The Bucks look like trouble for somebody. But I got to go with the guy who seems to get a touchdown every time he plays the game, and that's Will Fuller. I'm going to continue to shop here and just take guys. I have Will Fuller ranked at 79. I've seen him as high as 44 and as low as 147. I think Will Fuller is going to have a decent year in Miami. Yeah, you know, that this is the thing. When Will Fuller's healthy, he is always relevant. But it's when he's healthy. And, and he's one of the guys that at this point in round number 10, not a bad pickup to take, especially with the fact that you have a bunch of wide receivers already uh, Mike with Robbie Anderson, C.D. Lamb, Allen Robinson, and DeAndre Hopkins. So it's not like you need Will Fuller to save the day. So this is a good point to take somebody like that that you know is talented, know is capable. He's on a new team in Miami, but now it's, you know, if he doesn't stay healthy, you got a bunch of guys ahead of him. Trey Sermon, another guy that I look to, round 10, I would have let him go another round or so. He is a rookie running back for San Fran. They have Raheem Mostert, and they've used a bunch of guys, three, four guys a season due to injury and different things going on. So at this point, I'm going to go back to receiver for me, and I'm going to take the first receiver of the Baltimore Ravens, and I'm going to go with Marquise Hollywood-Brown at this point. I waited on him 
waited to see kind of where he would shake out. It's round number 10. Again, like I said with Mike, you got a bunch of people on your team already. You got a bunch of people in this position. I'm taking three receivers in a row. But Marquise Hollywood Brown, to me, makes sense at this pick to bring him in and give him a shot on my team because I have those flex areas. I already have DK Metcalf, Mike Evans, Jerry Judy, and LaVisca Chenault. So Marquise Hollywood Brown to get a number one target receiver at this point in round number 10, I'm cool with. Next two off the list are tight ends, Robert Tanyan and Rob Gronkowski. The, the guy that takes Tanyan, or pardon me, that takes Gronk also took Tom Brady here, has two tight ends with Kittle and Gronkowski. Nice one-two punch there. And already had a quarterback with Lamar Jackson, and in round number 11 takes Tom Brady. Jalen Hurts goes off of that. I, I got a lot of question marks with Jalen Hurts, which is why I'm probably going to stay away from him. I'm going to go back to running back at this point, as you see that I've, I've done a run on receivers, got five receivers. I have uh, three running backs at this point. Something that I want to look to. There's a couple guys that I'm interested in. And at this point, uh, Zach Moss and Devin Singletary are both available. They're both supposed to be a one-two punch. The question is, who's the one and who's the two in the punch? And that's something Buffalo hasn't figured out yet. Singletary spent a couple seasons in the league. Zach Moss has spent one less season than Singletary. They've both gone through different things. Damian Harris is in New England. New England doesn't really, when it comes to running back, there's a lot of question marks as far as what they're going to do and how they're going to do it, and it's typically by committee. So you want to stay away from that, in my opinion. A lot of these other guys are going to be backups in this system. So Singletary and Moss give me a chance of getting a starter. The question is, I'm going to roll the dice on one, and am I going to be right on one and not on the other? I'm going to go with Zach Moss in this situation. Singletary has been ranked lower than him. In, you know, in, in different in different rankers and whatnot. Mike has his. I'll be posting mine as well. But I'm going to take Zach Moss at this point. He's going to be my fourth running back and getting my fourth running back and potential starter in the 10th round or the 11th round. I'm very much okay with picking Zach Moss in round number 11. And I know there's going to be some Buffalo fans at our drafts here at the uh, Wildcat Sports Pub on 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York on Sunday, August 29th, because we're in central and upstate New York. But Zach Moss, for me, 11th round, I'm totally okay with. Matt Stafford, it, who is now the Rams quarterback, goes after that. Mike, besides me, we have seen a run of – you and I have been focusing on wide receivers and running backs. The rest of the league has been focused on tight ends and quarterbacks since you and I have picked. What are your thoughts? That's great. I love it because that gives me the best candy yet to pick. You know, mom gave me that money, and I picked all my favorite candies, and I still have that 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 couple bucks left over. So I'm picking out some bonus candy, and then I look, and I still have money left. And you know what? All these other kids are on the other aisle looking at the candy I don't like anyway. So I'm gonna go back to my favorites again. <laughs> I'm gonna continue to stock up. I am not afraid to go with just one quarterback and just one running back on my roster because chances are I feel good you, about. You mean guys. one tight end, right? I feel good about where I grab them. You mean one tight, one tight end and one running and one quarterback? Yeah, I'm okay, okay with that. Yeah. I'm okay with that because I'm not going to have dead weight on my bench. I'll worry about the bye weeks when the bye weeks come. And you know what? I'm not steering against those positions in my ranking. If where I'm at on my projections on my rankings, there's a quarterback or a tight end that's appropriate for me to take at this point, that's fine. I'll do it. But I'll wait till the end of the draft when I can get better value on a backup player. So I'm not afraid to go just one tight end and just one quarterback and continue to stock up on wide receivers and running backs. The reason I'm doing that, there's more of those position players, which makes it more likely that I may have made a mistake. Maybe that guy's not going to – maybe something's going to happen. Maybe one of these guys is going to get injured. I'm looking at my at my guys right now, and I have five wide receivers. I have three running backs. I have the quarterback and the tight end. 
I'm going to try to lean running back if I can. And lo and behold, I look at my rankings and I have a running back that I can take here. Now, I have a couple wide receivers in front of him, but I'm going to analyze these guys. And I'm not afraid to go wide receiver again here. But why do that when I have a running back relatively close on my projections? I'll give you an example. My next guys that I have projected here at 83, I have Curtis Samuel, wide receiver. At 85, I have wide receiver Jarvis Landry. At 88, I have Michael Gallup, wide receiver. Well, you know what? I can say something negative about each one of those guys and a reason not to draft them. I think Curtis Samuel, hey, he's stepping up to, to a one position basically in Washington. Can he handle that? I'm not sure he can go after the number, you know, attack the number one cornerback on the opposing team in every game. Jarvis Landry. Yeah, he's he's usually a pretty good player, but you know how's Odell being fully back going to impact him, and 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 what what type of season is Baker Mayfield going to have? And then I look at Michael Gallup. How many guys are in Dallas? They got a lot of guys. Yeah. They got Cooper. You got C.D. Lamb out there as well. So is the ball? Is there enough footballs to go around? So I look in three spots down. I have Damian Harris from from uh, New England. I've got him ranked as high as 55, as low as 130. I've got him at 91, and I'm getting him basically here at 115. So it's still value. I'm filling a backup need or a guy that I can rotate, and this guy can catch the ball, which is important in PPR scoring. So I definitely like Damian Harris here. So Damian Harris uh, coming off the board for Mike here at this point in the draft. Uh, Damian Harris, one of those guys that I said – you know, I stayed away from because of the fact that there's a committee there and that James White's going to be utilized. They don't have Tom Brady anymore, but I would imagine Mac Jones is going to take over eventually. Uh, so Damian Harris going in round number 11, uh, not bad here in a PPR. Ryan Tannehill, good as a quarterback to go late. Uh, this is somebody who has two quarterbacks now, right after Mike. And then Jarvis Landry, Curtis Samuel, Rashad Bateman, all coming off the board. Irv Smith in Minnesota, still unproven. Deshaun Watson. Goes in round number 12 for us this time around earlier. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr., Corey Davis, who's now a Jet. And uh, Devin Singletary does get taken a round after I took Zach Moss. And Antonio Brown comes off the list as maybe the third, fourth best option in Tampa. He is now off the list in round number 12. Mike, your thoughts as we come back to your pick. Where we're sitting right now as you see a bunch of these guys come off the the board, after you had made your decision to take who you took, uh, to see the fact that the Antonio Browns and the Singletaries, obviously I, I would think that potentially the Singletary uh, event was provoked by me because between my Zach Moss pick, there was no other running back taken except for Damian Harris. And then a lot of these wide receivers were taken. Rashad Bateman, uh, after I took Marquise Hollywood Brown shortly after that. And then uh, you brought up Jarvis Landry. And uh, Michael Pittman was a guy that I kind of circled because someone's going to eventually have to take over in Indy with Carson Wentz as the quarterback now. So what do you think about this? And what do you think about Deshaun Watson going in round 12? Yeah, I, I'm all for Deshaun Watson. Um, you know, depending on when you draft, you know, if, if you're one of my customers, I'm telling you, stay away from Deshaun Watson. I don't care. I, I, I just There's few players, and it's sometimes people think it's closed-mindedness, there's too much heat. There's too much problem. I don't even know where he's going to play at this point. So if I'm drafting today, I'm not even drafting him. I don't want any part of that heartache. I don't want it. To, I don't want my fantasy season to depend on that guy. Yeah. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to put myself in that place. However, as that story evolves and as things change, if he gets traded, if all of a sudden all settlements are made because there's no crypto fellas come out and said that he's still legally eligible to play. He's not on the exempt list, but they themselves have said that there are civil and criminal things still happening, still in the works there. So I, I just, it, it's too murky for me. I need to see clearly when I'm drafting. So I'm looking at the guys that went behind my last pick. I just talked about Jarvis Landry and Curtis Samuel. Yeah. I see Rashad Bateman. I like him a lot as a rookie. I'm okay with the Pittman and the Corey Davis picks there. I think they're right on the money. Over Smith went a little earlier than I thought. Antonio Brown's a little bit of value there but i think his play is spotty in a crowded receiver room i hats off to tom brady for getting him in check by the way and ha having antonio brown be a productive part of that offense and it's only going to get better but i've got five receivers here already i've got four running backs and i normally don't 
try to steer in one position. But again, my projections are my projections. I still show Michael Gallup available. I don't think I missed that. Um, I, so I got him ranked at 88, but I've got five guys on my team that I like better, and there's only two wide receiver and two flex positions. So I'm just going to steer away from that. Michael Gallup's just not going to make the team unless two more rounds he's still there. Then I might consider that, okay? I'm looking at Michael Gallup at 88. Devontae Parker at 101. Then I have a running back here. I have Ronald Jones. Now, I like Leonard Fournette a lot better, but I think Ronald Jones is going to make some improvement here, and I think Ronald Jones is going to step up. I've seen him as high as 65, as low as a 136. I've got him at 102. So basically, I'm taking him at, what, uh, 11, what, 116 here? I'm okay with that. Again, I'm getting value in every one of my picks. So I'm Ronald going. Ronald Jones is Ronald Jones is off. So he's off. Oh, right. I missed him. Yeah, he went he went round number eight. Yeah, he went round number eight. Jesus. <laughs> it's all right. Jesus. No, all right. right, I'm not gonna take Ronald Jones. See? And that's a mistake and that happens. Don't let that get you flustered in your draft. Continue to move forward if that happens. So let me check the name on the list here before I announce that again and make make a, <laughs> another bad pick. This is going to be a controversial pick for some people, but I don't think so. In a PPR situation, I'm totally okay with this. I'm totally okay with going with Naeem Hines here. I've got him at 112. This is right where he needs to be. He's going to catch the ball. He's going to be a pass-catching guy. But do you see what happened there? Yeah, I made a mistake, but you know what? I'm going to recover nicely from it, and it's only 10 projection picks off of where I thought that Ronald Jones was going to be. So I'm okay with Naeem Hines here. Yeah, you know, and Naeem Hines, another pick of somebody that I was looking at too, the dividends that he could potentially pay off for you and what he can do to help you out at this point in the draft, especially as far down as we've gone in the draft. So nothing wrong with picking up a Naeem Hines at this point because of the fact that, you know, he is going to give you talent. He's a guy that I covered at NC State. He's got a lot to offer, an H-back type of situation. A Michael Williams goes after that, which puts me in a situation, if you look at my team, uh, with four running backs and five wide receivers and one tight end and one quarterback at this point. You know, my question mark is where would I want to go from here? Because there's certain people that I'm looking at. There's certain people that, you know, my wide receivers, I like my wide receiver room. I like who I have. I like that. I've got a bunch of guys, but there's other people that I'm still looking to. And there's other people that, you know, are still attractive on the pick for me here. So my question is, do I want to go one more running back, knowing that I have enough in my wide receiver tank right now that I like what I have and I like my list and there's only a few picks in between. So at this point, this guy fell to me. I believe he's going to be utilized more and I believe he's going to be a better option than Jamal Williams was. So I'm going to go ahead and take A.J. Dillon at this point. I waited long enough until the bottom end of round 12. So there was a couple other running backs I looked to, but I'm going to go with A.J. Dillon at this point. And I know he's the backup to Aaron Jones in Green Bay, but I also know that there's the hope that, I mean, they drafted him high a couple of years ago and put him in a situation where, you know, I think that he was supposed to be the heir apparent to take over as the number two guy and potentially maybe one day as the number one guy. We'll see. But A.J. Dillon in round 12, my fifth running back. Yes, I took a chance on Zach Moss, not knowing which him or Singletary is going to do it. So that makes my A.J. Dillon pick a little bit more difficult for me to make. But A.J. Dillon, I would imagine with Jamal gone, he's going to get some carries, get some opportunities, maybe some goal line, which is great for me in scoring, and maybe some third down. So I like A.J. Dillon here, and I know his talent at Boston College and how he's a bruiser. So he goes... Tony Pollard goes, Michael Gallup, who I was also looking at, and Elijah Moore, the same team takes him back-to-back. I was looking at both of those guys on my receiver list, like I talked about. Uh, Tyler Higby goes to start off uh, round number 13 right after Elijah Moore. Uh, This gentleman has taken uh, two tight ends, Robert Tanyan and Tyler Higby, here relatively close to each other in the last four rounds. So that leaves me with an opportunity to take a look at At this point, do I want to get another quarterback? Well, I think there's enough guys out there that I can get. So do I want to go to tight end? Do I want to go to receiver? Well, I told you my receiver list had a bunch of different players out there that I liked. And there's guys that are still number ones or arguably could be number ones 
that are out there at wide receiver at this point. And, you know, Darnell Mooney, he's behind Allen Robinson. Devontae Parker's on his last leg. Henry Ruggs, still the guy with Vegas. He's still out there. Rondell Moore, a rookie for Arizona, who I drafted in the 1.0 mock draft. He still has an opportunity. He's got an opportunity here to find his footing. Uh, T.Y. Hilton's dropped down the list. Marvin Jones Jr. for Jacksonville now is down here. Uh, Nelson Aguilar. Amon Ross St. Brown is here. But there's a there's a couple guys that have not been taken yet, and I think that either one of them can rise to number two at the receiver, and one of them is somebody that I can use to give me that one-two punch. Another one of the guys is somebody that can put me in a situation that I think could be really helpful. And so I'm going to go with this gentleman because he can provide a one-two punch for me. In round number 13, I'm okay with it. Going with Gabriel Davis, who really stepped up from UCF. I have him now to work with Josh Allen. And so that's that situation can really help you out when you're looking at having a quarterback have a tandem with a quarterback and wide receiver. The other guy I'm looking at is still on the board, so I won't say it. But Gabriel Davis at this point makes sense for me. He's my sixth wide receiver, and I think that he's going to get multiple chances to make his hay. He may not be an every week guy, but I'm confident that he'll have multiple weeks to help me out. And I think he's somebody that can give me some some type of consistency at some point this season. So I like Gabriel Davis in the 13th round as my sixth wide receiver. And then we see Hunter Henry go after that. And we're now back to Mike. Mike, your thoughts. Yeah, I got five running backs, five wide receivers here. I have four rounds to go. I have four picks, basically, before I'm going to start picking my kicker and defense because I'm going to save those for the last two picks. Now, as this system is automated, boys, you're going to see in the next couple rounds here, defenses and kickers start to go off the board and again that's okay because i'm going to continue to stay on this aisle that i'm at in the grocery store because i'm on the aisle where everything's half off i'm playing with house money still here i'm okay with taking a you know a, a guy i may have to not play most of the year i'm okay with taking a Devonte parker here i got him at 101 a logan thomas another tight end i got him at 103 at 107 i have ty hilton and at 114 if i'm gonna go if i'm gonna load up on one thing at this point in the draft i consider running backs to be like celery okay celery is mostly water i can eat as much of it as i want it has negative calories that means I actually use more calories chewing up the celery than the celery has. So with that in mind, who am I looking at? I'm looking at running backs. If you're going to load up on one position late in your draft, make that make, err on the side of the running back because the running backs do get dinged up. They do get hurt. But still, at this point in the draft, this guy doesn't have to be my starter every week. This guy may not even take the field for me. But that's okay because he's on my team and he's not on the team I'm playing with. And that's why I'm going to take Jamal Williams. I think he has an opportunity to do some wonderful things. The system here has been ranked at 155. I've got him at 114. So getting him at 120, was at 120, 125, I'm still ahead of the curve here. I like Jamal Williams. He's going to catch the ball out of the backfield in Detroit. So Jamal Williams going uh, shortly after I take A.J. Dillon, who used to be there. And so that's put us in a situation now with Gus Edwards going, waiting to see when that was going to happen. Another guy late in the draft, Lamar Jackson's going to run the ball a lot. J.K. Dobbins was taken way early. Gus Edwards going to get some play. How much of that? Kind of a question mark. But here he goes, and he is off the board. Logan Thomas goes after you mention it as they read our brains here and listen to us. Matt Ryan and Justin Fields go as quarterbacks, as backups to uh, both of these teams. So we see that happen here. And as I'll pause the draft so that we can take a look at a couple moves that were made. Uh, Justin Tucker. Mike and I will tell you a thousand times over, and if you don't listen to us, it's your bad, not ours. I'm okay with it. There are 32 teams. There are 32 kickers. There are plenty of defenses to go around, especially in a 10-team league. So if you want to take Justin Tucker, who is my favorite kicker, if you want to take him in the 13th round, go right ahead. Todd Gurley, he goes off the board. I don't see any value there. 
Evan Ingram and Jonu Smith, two guys I was looking at to potentially back up my tight end if I was going to do that. I'm not going to force myself to take a second tight end. They were guys on my list. Devontae Parker, as Mike mentioned, and Washington, their defense was taken off the board. Mike and I will tell you a billion times over, whatever your last round is and your second to last round, those are your kickers in your defense. Kicker last, defense second to last. People will do this in the middle of the draft. They'll do it in round eight. They'll do it in round nine. They'll do it in round five. They'll do it in round 12. Mike and I will see a kicker and a defense taken at this point in the draft where we're trying to fill out our pieces and find some of those sleepers and get some of that stuff that really puts together a nice cake. If you want to, I don't know, put the box over the cake before the cake is done by drafting a defense or a kicker, go right ahead. I would imagine that Mike is more than okay with it, just like I am. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the the guy who picked uh, Travis Gurley here at the uh, at the turn after he took a kicker, he took Travis Gurley. Gurley's not even on a roster. That's the guy in your draft that picked up a magazine. Yes, I said magazine. That's a, a glossy paper thing that you used to be able to buy at a bookstore. That's right. We used to have these things called bookstores that you would go into and get books. Same thing with the magazine guy. Well, he's dealing with information that, that's three months out of date. You're dealing with the most up-to-date information. We're doing this together. So don't let stuff like that rattle. Well, these guys are taking kickers in defense. Maybe Mike was wrong. Don't do that. Stick to your plan, okay? If you have one thing that you're going to do, do what Dan said, and definitely consider the defensive kicker. I usually stream defenses. What does that mean? That means I'm not afraid to go with a different defense every week. I'll look at the matchups, and I'll go, oh, I like this defense better than this defense. And that's okay, because at worst, I normally have a defense that's ranked in my top 10. By the end of the show, by the end of the, the draft here, I'm willing to say that the defense that I take, and I'll, 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 you know, we'll talk about it here in a few, I'm sure, in a couple rounds. But the defense that I'm going to take is going to be the defense that's in my top ten. And you're going to go, how did that happen? You were the last one to, to pick, and you still, yeah, I still got one. Okay, that's okay. You know, now, and, and again, if I'm going to stock up on any one thing, I'm going to stock up on running backs here. All right, there's still some running backs that could make an impact. There's still some running backs that are an injury away of making it happen for themselves. And two of the guys that I'm looking at here are still available. And I'm going to tell you about the one I pick. I'm going to tell you about the one I don't pick first, J.D. McKissick. I think there's a lot to figure out. And I think Washington, even though they have a good defense, you know, they got to air it out quarterback. J.D. McKissick is a pass catching guy, and I'm okay with that. But I've got him ranked at 130. I have a Latavius Murray ranked at 120 at this point. You're like, well, Mike, you have all those running backs. Right? That's right. And they're on my team. I'm not going to face these guys next week by taking a defense here. I'm going to take this guy. And you know what? If something happens to Alvin Kamara, maybe the owner who took Alvin Kamara real early in the draft might have to trade with me. You know, and I'm not, I'm not shopping for trade bait here. I'm just adding to the value of my pick here. I'm picking it at, at 135, and I'm taking a guy who I got ranked at 120. They have ranked at 163 here on sleeper. I'm okay with taking Latavius Murray here. I'm taking a shot in the dark, but I'm okay with that. Onondaga County gentleman, uh, Latavius Murray, who's been a guest on the show here, coming off the list. Darnell Mooney, I think is great at, at this round, uh, round number 14, the number two in Chicago right now. Uh, so I love this pick out of Tulane. Shout out to Darnell Mooney. Covered Tulane in the American Athletic Conference. My guys are still out there. The the Kenneth Gainwells, the Chuba Hubbards, the guys that are one play away from getting out there. Kenneth Gainwell behind Miles Sanders. And Mike talked about, you know, Miles and, and whatnot and, and injury and things that he's had to come back from. God willing, he stays healthy. Chuba Hubbard there, Alexander Madison. I'm just trying to round some things out at this point. Philip Lindsay's not in Denver anymore. He's in Houston, so that draws me away from him. J.D. McKissick there in Washington with an opportunity to do some things. I like a few of these picks, and I like Chuba. I do. But Mike brought him up, and I'm going to go in this world because Washington's used more than one. So I'm going to go with J.D. McKissick at this point. Round number 14, at the bottom of round number 14, I'm getting my sixth running back. After that, Henry Ruggs goes, who's the number one in Vegas. McCall Hardman. And then we see Koo, the Atlanta kicker, go, which I'm totally fine with. 
And Rondell Moore, who I got really late in the draft, a rookie wide receiver in a mock draft 1.0 that we did here in the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly presented by the Wildcat Sports Pub here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios. I had picked him up last time right at the end, so I'm okay with that as well. Another kicker going off the board doesn't bother me. At this point, I'm saying to myself, you know what? I could go another quarterback. There's a bunch of guys out there. There's some guys that I like. There's some guys that I think will do some good things and, you know, that I can take a chance on. A part of me wants to take a flyer. A part of me wants to take a shot in the dark on one of these guys. And I debate on whether or not I want to actually, you know, pull the trigger on that and let that happen. I'm not sold that Jameis Winston's the quarterback in New Orleans. I feel like Taysom, Taysom Hill is going to get a lot of play. We know he can do a lot of different things. So if I were to draft him here, I'm getting a kind of a Swiss Army knife as my backup quarterback. But we also see that Baker Mayfield's there, and I go back and forth on him. Carson Wentz gets injured. Ryan Fitzpatrick is timeless. Uh, he seems to get better with age. Uh, Trey Lance is out there for San Francisco, and he's a guy that I could take a flyer on that could really work out for me as they went drafted and they went in the first round and they went from 12 to three to go out and get them. I would be getting him very, very late in the draft. If I took a chance here, there's a lot of guys I like though. There's a lot of value. I like Taysom Hill. I don't want to deal with that situation. Baker Mayfield. I like two is still out there. And so there's, there's, there's a bunch of different places I could go, but what I'm going to do because I wasn't sold that I had to get another quarterback is, you know, Mike said he took a shot in the dark with Latavius Murray. Well, you know what? I'm going to roll the dice, and I'm going to see what happens. This guy is ranked well above the guy that was supposed to be the starter and the guy they spent a lot of money on, but they went from pick 12 to pick 3 to get this guy. I'm going to go with North Dakota State's Trey Lance, and I'm going to take him as my backup quarterback in round 15, which I'm more than okay with, to roll the dice on him a lot later than the San Francisco 49ers did in real life to take him as my backup to Josh Allen. And then Nelson Aguilar comes off the list for New England. Mike, your thoughts? Yeah, I like the way the draft's going here. There's still some tremendous value. And I'm leaning toward backup quarterback at this point as well, simply because of where I'm at in the draft. I normally wouldn't be alarmed to even take one. But if one falls to me, I'll take him here. And the guy I'm considering is the new Mendoza line. But I'll get to that in a second. Just want to go back and comment on a few things. Nelson Aguilar, uh, I'm okay with. Unless you're Randy Moss, you haven't done anything as a wide receiver in New England. Trey Lance, that pick's an outstanding pick there. And the reason why is you're at this point in the draft, you're you're taking a calculated risk. You're still playing with house money, so that's good. The kicker pick, we, we talked about that. Rondell uh, or, uh, Moore is going to be a, an outstanding player as well. I, I just, I really think that at this point, I need to go with the value still. And I'm looking, and I have a ton of running backs. I have a ton of receivers. I have seven running backs. I have five receivers. And I'm thinking, well, this guy's probably not going to take the field, and that's okay. And I'm okay with that because, so, okay, I have Kirk Cousins here ranked 134. I wouldn't mind having him as my backup quarterback if I had one. And Tua, I have Tagovailoa ranked at 140. But I'm looking at the teams behind me on the draft board, and all of them but one have two quarterbacks. I doubt they're going to draft three quarterbacks. It happens. People do it, and that's okay. Yeah. But I, I, I don't need to do that. I can do it on the way back, and I can cash in on some of this value before one of these other teams. I got 10, I, I have 10 picks after me. I don't want one of these other teams to take these guys. Let me tell you who I'm thinking about. They're all wide receivers. Uh, I've got T.Y. Hilton here, and I'm double-checking as I go. i got T.Y. Hilton ranked at 107. I've got Marvin. No, Marvin Jones is gone at this point, right? Let me see. Marvin Jones. No, he's still available. Yeah, Marvin Jones the system has, system has him at 141. I have him at 119. Then i got a guy I'm going to shy away from in jail and rape away from him because I didn't like him at another receiver and Devontae Smith with one of the early picks this year. Uh, Cole Beasley is there. Uh, I, I don't feel good about him at this point either. Uh, he's a he, he, he's a flavor of the week type guy out of the slot, and I'm okay with that. Then the quarterback I'm eyeballing is at 134, Kirk Cousins, and then two is at 140, and I'm okay with all that. But if I stick to my projections, I'm going to get a ton of value right here in T.Y. Hilton. 
I mean, I've got him at 107, and basically I'm taking him at 145. T.Y. Hilton, maybe he slipped a bit. There's a new quarterback. Maybe this is going to refresh him. So I'm going to take the gamble here, and I'm going to go with T.Y. Hilton here because I think at this point in the draft, I can't go wrong, and I'm going to start looking toward that backup quarterback on the way back. Yeah, so T.Y. Hilton, yeah, another guy uh, that I looked at too, you know, that that's just sitting there. You know, uh, Michael Pittman, the guy that's supposed to be the heir apparent that they just drafted very recently, you know, he's he's supposed to be the guy, and, and T.Y. has fallen. I think T.Y. is a great pickup in the 15th round. Kenneth Gainwell was another guy I looked at. Philadelphia, Miles Sanders right behind him. Another Memphis running back. Every year, Memphis seems to send a running back to the NFL, and Kenneth Gainwell is the next one. Baker Mayfield that I brought up, he's gone. And then we saw a run on defenses. Bucks, Rams, Niners in a row. Steelers later on. Uh, we see two kickers go. Chuba Hubbard that I brought up, he went. And so, you know, after I got J.D. McKissick, I was thinking about Gainwell and Hubbard, and they're both off the list now. And Zach Ertz goes in round number 16, where in the past he would have gone in the top, uh, you know, top six rounds, top five rounds, depending. So, you know, we've seen a lot of defenses come off, Mike. We've seen kickers come off. And we've seen the guys that at this point – I think would round out your running backs very well, uh, McKissick, Gainwell, or Hubbard, and you also drafted Latavius Murray. All of these guys are now gone, and now we're back to you. Yeah, at this point, I'm going to go position need here, and like I predicted, you know, only that one team picked up a quarterback, and it took Mayfield. So being aware of where you're at, but being a, being aware of where the draft is at is key because I picked up T.Y. Hilton there. Now I'm not sure if somebody would have taken T.Y. if – if you know i didn't pick him there but i i'm sticking to my plan and i'm gonna get tremendous value this is the last position pick that i'm gonna have before i go defense and kicker with the last two picks here so i'm okay with taking a backup quarterback in the mendoza line of Kirk cousins now what i mean by the mendoza line is every year uh, I usually had Andy Dalton as the Mendoza line. He's usually that 15, 16, 17th ranked quarterback in the middle out of 32 starting quarterbacks. He's a bi week fill in. He's a safe pick. I'm probably not going to get five touchdowns in a game out of him, but I'm probably not going to get five interceptions either. So he's my stopgap guy. Kirk Cousins is that guy right now, and I think he's going to round out my team very nicely. Yeah, Kirk Cousins are coming off the list here. And uh, Marvin Jones right after that, a guy that I looked at. Now, in my leagues, we have, we've have we had caps where you can only take uh, six receivers, six running backs. But in this one, I'm allowed to, in this mock draft, take another one. And I brought him up before, and somehow he's still there. He's got good numbers coming in the season. And besides Calvin Ridley as a true wide receiver, he's the next guy. I'm going to take Russell Gage in round number 16 which I think is fantastic value for me. So I'm going to take Gage now, like I said, in in my leagues, you know, and we normally cap out at six wide receivers. I'm taking seven here because I can, because I want to show people, as Mike said, value. Uh, Russell Gage here, I, I think, is perfect at this point. Uh, and then we see another kicker going, Greg Zerline. In my leagues, you get more points the farther they kick from. Zerlines can, can boot it from 50. So this is a good pick, just a round too early. And then Philip Lindsay, Tariq Cohen, Alexander Madison, rounding out some things for people, which brings me to my defense, which I always take in the second to last round. So my defense, I got I got a bunch of defenses I'm still interested in. I got Tennessee, I got Indy, I got Cleveland, I got Baltimore, I got New England, I got Miami. There's a bunch here. Well, I'm going to go with a defense that has, over time, through the draft and through different moves, has continued to become more and more of a terror to my Jacksonville Jaguars. They got some of the guys I know, Harold Landry from BC, and so I'm going to take the Tennessee Titans defense, and that'll give me my defense for here, which will bring us to Mike, and the Ravens defense will be taken after that. So now it's time for Mike to choose his defense, and then we'll head into the final round for the kicker. Mike, what do you got? This is all formality for me. I, and looking back at the past couple picks here, you know, I, deep, this is where the rest of the teams are going to pick up defenses and, and so forth. And I'm okay with that because I, I feel good with where I'm at. The top five defenses are off the board right now as far as my rankings go. But if you look at the board here, 
two, four, six, seven have gone already in a draft. So I'm still ahead of the game. I'm definitely going to get a top 10 defense here. But look at that Alexander Madison pick. That's a great pick. It's a real good pick because, well, he doesn't have Dalvin Cook. And if Dalvin Cook goes down, which Dalvin Cook is known to be injury prone, He's just picked himself up another outstanding running back or trade bait later. Again, you're not drafting to trade. You're drafting for value. And I would be willing to bet if I was the owner of Dalvin Cook, I'd be a little bit concerned that I didn't handcuff him. I'm not a fan of handcuffing all the time, but in certain situations where guys are injury prone, that can be key to your success here. So I'm definitely going with the defense here because that's what I need to do. And I'm looking at my defensive rankings, and I had Steelers at this point in time, based on my projections, I had Steelers 1, Bucks 2, Washington football team three, the Rams four, the Ravens five, and the number six ranked defense I have here are the Miami Dolphins. Now, again, I'm down the door and saying, hey, the Dolphins, I'm not concerned. I'll call the dream of you. But out the gate, I feel good about the Dolphins here. Okay, so I'm like going with the Dolphins. So now we'll see uh, Tevin Coleman come off the board. Uh, another kicker, Jordan Hawkins, Le'Veon Bell, Rashad Penny, Darrington Evans, Sony Michelle, James White back to back from New England. And then we see we see a Williams go as a backup in Kansas City at running back. And Tyler Bass, the next best available kicker, according to this list, comes off of it, Mike. So your kicker as we round out the draft, who are you going to take? Yeah, you know, again, your kicker, again, you can even stream then. I, I probably don't end the year with the same kicker twice. Yeah. You know, I probably end up changing at some point in the year. And, you know, stuff happens. These guys get hurt as well. But, again, to prove the theory, I had the Dolphins at number six. I got the Dolphins. I got a top ten defense, definitely. And I'm looking at my rankings again, and I'm getting the number five kicker on my rankings right now in Ryan Suckup. Why wouldn't I do that? He's top 10 kicker. Yeah, so Mike takes a top 10 kicker in Ryan Suckup. It goes to me now, and I have the opportunity to take my kicker as Will Lutz comes off after that, spends half the season in a dome. So that's another good reason to take a kicker. There's a bunch of guys out here that I could take. There's a bunch of situations. There's a guy that's been around forever in a day. There's a few of them that have been around forever in a day. But I'm gonna take I'm gonna take uh, Old Faithful here, and I'm gonna go with Mason Crosby out of Green Bay. But I'm like Mike, I don't always end this, you know, with the same kicker. And then we see Cleveland Browns and the Colts defense go. So that rounds it out, and that's what the rosters look like. Mike and I will be putting our 1.0s and 2.0 videos on WakeUpCallDT.com. You'll be able to see them on the Winning Fantasy Football Group, uh, also Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com. And you'll be able to see the full list with all the stickers on here of everything that we've been able to go through. So this is our 2.0, different from our 1.0. You can see the differences side by side by going and checking it out. So make sure that you go over there and do that today. And uh, and what is here? Uh, Greg said, any particular reason or reasons why there's max and minimum caps on positions? Um, I have minimum to make sure that people have a backup so they don't forget. And I've had maximums because we were in bigger leagues. But if it's a 10-team league, I may get rid of the maximum and let you kind of take what you want to take, running backs and wide receivers. I did it to try and make it more even. But as you saw in this draft in a 10-team league, plenty of receivers and running backs to go around. So we may get rid of the max. And uh, with that being said, Mr. Sofka, thank you as always for all you do. Hey, one quick thing here yes, that is a little caveat to drafting that not a lot of people are totally aware of, but always check your league rules and settings for situations just like you talked about with position limits. But more importantly, we're drafting relatively early. It's still July, all right? There's still some time. There's still injuries are going to happen in camp. Some guys are going to bust an ankle getting off the bus. Somebody's going to get cut. Somebody's going to get traded to a different team, and their whole situation is going to change. So you want to have that flexibility some drafts some leagues allow you to go without drafting certain positions why is that key i'm always taking a defense and a kicker at my at my last two picks yeah. now, i'm not sure i would do this with two picks but i'm definitely 
you know, okay with doing it with at least one, and that would be salvaging my kicker for another position player. Why would I do that? Because I'm early. I don't know who's going to get hurt. I don't. Is it going to be one of the guys on my team that I'm going to be scrambling? So it's not unheard of to go without drafting a kicker, drafting another position player, another wide receiver, another running back. I'd rather have that this tough decision later who to cut later. Make it be the guy that you take instead of the kicker. Make that your rule of thumb. But overall, I feel good about this draft. I'm looking at it. Send me the trophy. Send me the money. I'm going to win this league. I'm real confident in it. I think the draft went as predicted, went as I thought it would, and I'm totally happy with the the way the draft looks. You drafted a good team as well here, Dan. I don't think you stretched at all. I think you backed yourself up, and I think you put yourself in a position to make the playoffs in this team, you know, in an early grade anyway. But, uh, you know, I'm always going to have the super confidence that I would win every league. When I leave a draft, yeah. I, I feel good about it. That means I'm going to have a good year. So, I, you know, again, thanks for the opportunity. I look forward to a 3.0. I look forward to when you're in Florida getting together here. And, again, check out the website, HallOfFameFantasyFootball.com. You know, it, it could be the difference between winning or losing your league. So, I mean, it is what it is. You want to do it great. You don't. That's fine. Just listen to us here. That's fine. But go check out Hall of Fame Fantasy Football. You're going to be able to get some valuable information. Some of it's free. Some of it can be tailored to your league settings, customized to your league. So there's opportunity for you to win your draft. And normally, if you win your draft, you're going to win your league. So I feel good about it. Thanks again, Dan. Absolutely, brother, and thank you as always. Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com, Mike Sofka, and of course, Facebook. Join our group here on Facebook, Winning Fantasy Football. In the meantime, Mike, I'll talk with you soon, and I'll, God willing, see you very soon as well. Sounds great, Dan. Thanks. Take care. That coming from Mike Sofka once again here inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour. Not one of, not a, but the Fantasy Football Power Hour. Hour. So thank you for all of the great stuff that the Wildcat Sports Pub does. 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York, open seven days a week. And, of course, they're open for takeout and delivery by calling 315-487-2222. That's 315-487-2222 for the Wildcat. We'll take our final step aside of the show and get you set for the rest of the week. Right after this, where sports meets life on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. It's what happy tastes like. Do you know why? Because we make ice cream. Creamy, rich, flavorful ice cream. Not yogurt or ice milk like some of our competitors. Ice cream. Fresh, by hand, daily. For the calorie conscious, we have something new for you. Our new Carvalite. Same great flavor, creaminess, and texture of our regular ice cream with only 35 calories an ounce. So whether you want an ice cream cake, flying saucer, dasher, carvalanche, hard or soft ice cream, we will satisfy your craving with our fresh, handmade, regular, or new Carvalite ice cream. Carvel the way. It's what happy tastes like. Happy Cabal offers same-day local delivery of our products, offering no delivery charge for Onondaga County. Shop CappyCabal.com for fresh roasted coffee beans, cold brew, travel mugs, and all your essential Cappy Cabal needs. Cappy Cabal, coffee for the soul. Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315-487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant.
Avicoli's, located on the corner of Route 57 and Wetzel Road in Liverpool, New York, is your home for the Liverpool Warriors monthly athletic show dealing with coaches and players, the athletic department in general. Right up the road is Liverpool High School, and there as your neighbor for decades is Avicoli's, where we get to do the show every single month with the Liverpool Warriors. And, of course, they're open Tuesday through Sunday for lunch, dinner, and drinks. You can go and find them on the pizza casual side as well as the fine dining, the bar, and the outdoor dining. And for takeout, delivery, and catering, you can call 315-622-5100 as well as going to myavacolis.com. Plenty of ways to link to one of our local neighbors that has been with us and trusted for decades. Thank you to Avicoli's. K9 Camp Dog Daycare and K9 Campground Dog Boarding. A big shout out to both of them for everything that they do for our furry loving friends. Taking care of Lily and all the dogs in our community. K9 Camp Dog Daycare located on 228 Old Bridge Street in East Syracuse. And K9 Campground Dog Boarding located on 242 Johnson Street around the corner in East Syracuse. Right by BJ's off of Bridge Street in East Syracuse. You'll find both of these places that care and love our animals just like we do. It's truly like dropping them off with a trusted family member. So thank you to Lorraine, Chad, and the entire team, Heather, everybody at K9 Camp Dog Daycare and K9 Campground Dog Boarding. PB&J's Lunchbox, you know their food truck. You follow it all throughout the community. Well, guess what? Now you can go to their street side cafe and you can get PB&J's Lunchbox whenever you want to at 663 Old Liverpool Road in Liverpool, New York. And they are there Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., closed on Sundays. Don't miss a minute of getting the food that you love. Breakfast, dinner, and lunch all served daily so you can get whatever you want. You can get breakfast for dinner, dinner for lunch, dinner for breakfast, lunch for breakfast, whatever you want, including their grilled peanut butter and jelly award-winning sandwiches. PB&J's Lunchbox, 663 Old Liverpool Road in Liverpool, New York. Victory Sports Medicine and Orthopedics on 791 West Genesee Street in Skinny Atlas is your step to victory. They are who they say they are. Victory is something that they want you to attain. Any injury, head to toe, whether it's preventative care, rehab, physical therapy, or surgery, Victory Sports Medicine and Orthopedics takes you through the process of getting you back better and getting you potentially to the best you've ever been. I've trusted them for almost a decade of going up there, and what I love more than anything is that Dr. Mark Petropoli and his entire team treat their patients as people, they care, and they listen. It's something that you will not find in many places, and that's why Victory is worth going out to Skinny Atlas and meeting with them. So schedule your appointment today, 315-685-7544. That's 315-685-7544, and you will not be disappointed. So thank you so much for everybody that's done that. Thank you so much to everybody. Shout out to my guests in the first video and in the first hour. A big thanks to Trip Durham of 2D Consulting, LLC, as well as Christopher Heidel of Herb FM Sports Radio talking about college football and the 2021 ACC kickoff that they were on site for with me. And, of course, a big thanks to the Wildcat Sports Pub for the Fantasy Football Power Hour every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. with Mock Draft 2.0. You can see our Mock Draft 1.0 and 2.0 on YouTube.com backslash DT. You can also find it on our Fantasy Football tab on WakeUpCallDT.com and so much more. Make sure you're listening and watching Wake Up Call with Dan Satora every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. YouTube.com backslash Wake Up Call DT. Facebook.com backslash Wake Up Call DT. Facebook.com backslash Live Now DT. MixLR.com backslash Wake Up Call DT. And on the homepage of our website, WakeUpCallDT.com. The archives will continue to grow. Stitcher, Spotify, MixLR, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. YouTube, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and Podbean. You will find us there by searching Wake Up Call with Dan Tatora or one word, Wake Up Call DT. And a special thanks to all of our partners in central and upstate New York, Mother's Cupboard, Cafe Cubal, Carvel DeWitt, Wildcat Sports Pub, Victory Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, Chick-fil-A Clay and Chick-fil-A Cicero, Avicoli's, Canine Camp Dog Daycare, Pizza Man, Millhouse Market, Honda City of Liverpool, PB&J's Lunchbox, Canine Camp Ground Dog Boarding, and Mon Paz Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory. out in the meantime we'll see you tomorrow 
Facebook at Wake Up Call DT, Twitter at Call DT, Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT. And as always, my wonderful, beautiful people in the world, God bless, no stress, do your best. I appreciate you. I send you my love. And may your heart be wide open to love. And may your brain be at peace. I'll talk to all soon. God bless you.